All right, this is part two of the uh, fly zone, falc wolf. Sorry if I say park zone, I cannot get it right. Fly zone, falc wolf, FW190. Anyways, uh, we finished off the doors. I uh, thought I had enough room in memory card, and I didn't, so we got cut off there. But anyways, we finished off on assembling the doors. Um, when they mount on here, they can be moved up and down. So if you have an fitment issue, or anything like that, to where it's just not lining up with the top hole, um, I do recommend putting the bottom one in first because that one's not moving obviously, it's going to be going and then lining your top one up. Uh, if it doesn't fit, just kind of undo it and move it up and down a little bit. You may be fighting the spring pressure in here, so just keep that in mind. You may have to pull down on it, and, or if you want, you can just undo these guys and get this in the right spot and get it back in. A lot of times you're going to be dealing with uh, screw direction, so you may have to uh, kind of get creative. I just put them together as it is, and then if I have an issue, I will uh, move this up and down just by hand. I'll kind of hold on to it. And then with a the screwdriver on the back side, I'll tighten it up where it's needed and go from there. So, uh, let's see here, the door mounts. And then, uh, obviously, you want to be using Loctite. We talked about that a little bit in the last one. You want to use Loctite here on the metal only, obviously. And then in these ones, for the mounting fixture itself, obviously not on the one up here. It goes in the plastic, not needed. The ones for the doors, I would use Loctite on. I would recommend it. And then your ones down here for fixing. For uh, clamping these two together, and then you want in here for the spring. I would use Loctite on those guys just to help out blue Loctite or a uh, lighter Loctite if you can. I've used red a couple times and uh, had a heck of a time trying to get those screws out. And those little tiny two mil guys, the heads on them cannot handle it, and sometimes they end up breaking. And then I'm having fun with drill bits and whatnot. So uh, one thing I wanted to kind of add to this is a technique I've dealt with several times is losing this little darn screw right here. I, I imagine some people probably have lost this screw in a time or two whether using my kit or just putting it back on the stock setup. The bad thing about the stock setup is obviously you cannot take it apart like I have done here. You're stuck to trying to get the screw to stretch all the way over to that point right there and it's under tension so you know you may lose it or whatnot but uh, yeah with mine it's kind of nice because you can just go ahead and put it on like this. How I have it in this one. So. I actually do this first. I'll install it on the upper portion first. Um, obviously, you can tell it's an upper because it'll have these two extra holes, and the lower just has the one. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll take it. I'm not going to go all the way because I only have one hand. But you'll take it, and you'll rest it down in there. You'll drop the screw in, and you'll start threading it on, and just get it to the point where it's got several threads in. And then you can lift it up, and then you would put your, you would drop your strut in, and get your strut alignment proper and whatnot for the. Excuse me, that's down. Um, get everything going from there. Let's see what else we got here. Spring tension. Um, one thing I was going to say earlier, I meant to add it to the last portion of this, but when you're dealing with this guy for up and down, um, being able to adjust this, it'll actually will adjust your wheel up and down as well because there's a lock that's built into this right here that this is going to hinge down and contact and keep this from basically the wheel extending. See how the wheel doesn't come up anymore? Because it's hitting a lock. Uh, mine actually have them in them. It's just a little tiny tab that's in them. Of course, I can't find it. It's just a little tab that's right there, just hanging off. So it's not a big deal if they do come out all the way because they're going to set like this anyways while they're in there. But if you start having clearance issues, whenever it oh, fighting it here, whenever it comes down and your wheel clearance is a bit off, it's a bit high right in here. Um, on mine, I never really cared about it, so I shaved it out. I wasn't really worried about it. But the way my kits are set up, these are up. They can slide up and down. Like I said earlier, the way I've drilled them and set them up, it's all for stock configuration, so it should fit in here just fine with no problems. Um, once again, let me know if anyone has any uh, problems with that. You know, I'll uh, help you out for assembly reasons or whatnot, or if you want to send it back to me, we can kind of figure something out. Not a big deal at all. Uh, one more thing I wanted to kind of go over that wasn't quite on the last video is uh, the upper strut removal of the mounting brackets. It's still going to be exact same. Um, you're going to want to run two grooves down it with your cutoff wheel from your Dremel and then you're going to take your screwdriver and kind of pry them open and they'll pop right out. Um, this one's just covered in super glue but I, I don't remember what the factory uses. I'm pretty sure it's a type of super glue or a CA or something like that but it doesn't hold very well and it will come off if you just kind of work at it and it comes off. So it, that technique will work with this one. Obviously we showed you how to pop it out of there and then it'll work with this guy once you've taken it out. Like I said, I do recommend working this one first while it's in the plane, removing the whole upper strut with all of it attached, 
and then working on these ones just so you're not still in the, in the plane messing up your foam and whatnot so and then you would work removing this one and this one and once you get them all off you can assemble them like I've kind of said in this video and the past one and get them all in there and get your fitment good make sure everything goes up and down and then once you get all satisfied with everything how it is you can put your outer doors on and then run your servos and uh, you know go from there and happy flights and whatnot and all that good stuff so if anyone has any other questions you can uh, send me a message on uh, RC groups I'm uh, OLD or old 82 cutlass at RC groups. So once again, that's old 82 cutlass at RC groups. Happy flights, guys. Later.